You're watching F5. We are here at ITSA 2023 in Nuremberg, Germany. Uh, I am joined by my local tour guide, actually, Timo Stark. Timo has been helping me uh, get around Germany, which has been uh, fantastic to, to have that resource here. Uh, Timo, how are you doing? I'm very good. Thanks, Boo. Awesome. And Timo, what's your role at F5? I'm a principal technical product manager uh, working for the Nginx product group and mainly in all things open source mm. in Nginx. Awesome, really cool. Well, speaking of that, I know that uh, you were actually just at DockerCon. Now, you're a DockerCon, or, sorry, you're a Docker captain, I believe? Yes, I'm a Docker captain since uh, April this year. Very proud of that. Oh, cool. And what does a Docker captain uh, entail? So, a Docker captain is basically kind of a community evangelist. So, the Docker captains are people that are using Docker extensively, daily, have a lot of knowledge about the Docker ecosystem, and they share the, the, the knowledge and all the, the things they know about Docker with the community, they manage the community. Um, so Docker has a, they have a special program, the Docker Captains program, and it's kind of an elite group, I would say. We are around roughly 70 to 80 people um, for the whole world, just Docker Captains, which is, which is very, very cool to be a part of this, yeah. such an amazing group. And uh, yeah, as you said, I was just at DockerCon in Los Angeles last week, um, reunion with all the captains. Um, and it's, it's, it's perfect to have all those talented people in a room and being able to talk to. Oh, that's awesome. And you've done some contributions to Docker. You have a Docker extension that you wrote? Right, uh, we wrote a Docker desktop extension um, for Nginx that makes it very easy to manage an Nginx on Docker Desktop. Oh, that's really cool. Uh, and you've also been working on some other uh, projects with Nginx, so uh, particularly around Unit, WebAssembly. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Sure. So first of all, Nginx uh, Unit is now an official Docker image, mm. which means that Docker takes care of the build process and all the, all the stuff of the container images, um, which is very cool. So Nginx Unit is our universal web app server, so we can run your application code in seven different languages natively in a single in a single image, um, which is great. I love it, especially for PHP. I'm, I'm still using PHP. I know that's the, the boo scene in this movie, but I, <laughs> I still love it. So, um, right, and at DockerCon, uh, we share, I've shared an amazing new feature which is WebAssembly on unit. So we can now run your WebAssembly modules um, on Nginx unit. Oh, that's awesome. OK, so maybe you can educate uh, the community, the Dev Central community in particular, or the F5 community, about WebAssembly, uh, what it is, why it's so exciting right now. Well, WebAssembly. Um, so the official, the very official statement on the website, what WebAssembly is, is it is a binary instruction format for a stack-based virtual machine. That was, the <laughs> that was the official statement from the website. So what it means? Basically means that you can write a program in Rust, C, C++, Python, or Go, and then you can compile this program code to binary instructions, which is then the WebAssembly binary file. So basically, it's, it's, a, it's a unified binary language format, and this file or this format can then be executed on a special WebAssembly runtime. So it makes it very portable and very secure. And I had a very a very great session about WebAssembly and the learning we did at Nginx with WebAssembly at DockerCon, and I explained it in a way that Java had a similar approach. Java is also compiled into a binary instruction format for a stack-based virtual machine but this tech based virtual machine is the JVM. So if you, if you have a knowledge about what Java is, then you basically understand what WebAssembly is, but WebAssembly can be compiled from a large set of different languages, a lot more than just the Python, uh, the, the Java um, compatible ones. Mm. So this is, in general, the technique about WebAssembly. Um, so why do I think it is it super important? I had an honor to join a panel discussion at DockerCon with some Docker people and Matt Butcher from Fermion about WebAssembly and finding an answer to the question, could this be the next wave of cloud computing? 
So VMs was one, from VMs to containers was basically the second one and is now, as WASM is approaching and evolving, is this at the beginning of the new era of cloud computing? Is that the third wave from containers to WebAssembly? Um, and we had a, a discussion about an hour and I think the main, the main sentence or the main outcome of this discussion is or was that for some specific use case, we do think that WebAssembly can replace and, cont and container entirely within the next year. So, that being said, you will be able to run your WebAssembly binaries natively on Kubernetes, for example, natively on a Docker runtime. You, it is compatible with the OCI container format, so you can just push your WASM code into your registry and use the tools you already know from Kubernetes, from Docker, and just deploy a WASM module instead of a container. But for some use cases, this will be the case. For some other use cases, like for databases or things like that, I don't think that we will have a, a, a MySQL database in a WASM module within the next year. So, um, but we will see web services and functions as a services, for example, where what the AWS Lambda, for example, today, this is an area where we'll, where we'll see a lot of WASM things and a lot of WASM technology um, present within the next uh, 12 months. This is really exciting. Like some of the use cases that I've seen so far have been taking uh, clients, uh, applications that you would see that are like very large or bloated uh, and be able to have like ultimate transportability. Uh, the use case that I saw was Adobe Photoshop, which is a larger program. Right. Takes some horsepower to run that. Uh, and then you could see it run full performance uh, inside of a page, a web yeah. page. Right, so ex excellent point because what you just mentioned is we have two very big areas of WebAssembly today. One is WebAssembly in your browser on the client, which is Adobe Photoshop um, in the browser, like mind-blowing. Just imagine all this Photoshop stuff in a WebAssembly module in your browser. So this brings WebAssembly and the possibility to execute binary code with almost native performance. This is the trick, with almost native performance in your browser. The other area, what I was just talking about, is WebAssembly for the server side. So the runtime is not in your browser, it is on the server side, basically in Nginx unit, for example. So this is a, a, second, a second area. So mm -hmm. good, good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. Well, that'll be really cool too. Like actual, um, you could really take uh, large programs that weren't necessarily uh, broken down into microservices yet, uh, and they could be run as potentially as uh, WebAssembly or certain applications that have been broken down also run them as WebAssembly but still have like all this portability across all these applications. Yeah, and even more important than just portability is security mm. because WebAssembly and the runtime for WebAssembly comes with a very, very, very sandboxed default mode. Mm. So that being said, we are not starting a WebAssembly binary in a mode that we say, hey, you can do everything you want and please let me know if I should restrict something. It's exactly the opposite. Mm. It is. It starts with no permissions. You're not even allowed to access directories on the file system, networks, sockets, stuff like that. It's, it's, all, it's all prohibited. It's not allowed. It's, it's absolutely closed and sandboxed. And if you would like to grant access to your WebAssembly module, on the server side to access given directories, do network calls, things like that, you have explicitly grant this type of privilege mm. to your WebAssembly binary. So that being said, it's it's a it brings a lot of native security into your into your landscape. And for example, just imagine if you're a cloud provider and you would like to provide a solution to host functions as a service, this isolated approach is just the way to go because you cannot talk to another to another binary over the network. If you're not allowed to do this, then it's not allowed. So portability is one thing, but another very big area is um, the security. That's awesome. Force people to think about the security first before opening everything up. 
Uh, that's fantastic. I'm sure we can go on forever about this, so we'll actually <laughs> probably park uh, some part two content uh, for this at some point. Uh, great to have you join me, Timo. Thank you very much for uh, the tour guide, being my tour guide here in Nuremberg as well. Um, maybe I'll post some uh, clips of what I've been seeing around here, thanks to Timo. Um, otherwise, thank you very much for joining us here at ITSA 2023. We'll have a playlist with all of this content. Thank you very much for Timo uh, Westcom, who we're sharing a booth with as well. And thank you to you, the viewer, for watching this content. Hope you tune in, subscribe, watch all the next ones. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Bye.